Good day everyone, Dr Polaris here. Before I get to the main topic of this video, I'd like to make a short announcement. I don't think I've ever discussed my life outside of this channel before, but I think now is the right time to do so. I'm a PhD student at King's College London, and I'm currently working on writing and researching for my thesis. As I have just entered the second year of the three-year course, my university work will start to take a greater prominence in my life from now on, and as such, I won't be able to dedicate as much time to my channel as I had in the past. Therefore, starting this week, I'll be cutting my uploads to two videos per month, instead of releasing videos every week. Sorry for the change, but know that I'm not totally abandoning this channel, and I'm still intent on keeping Alter Earth and Dr. Polaris running. Thank you so much for your understanding. Now, let's return to today's scheduled programming. Phytosaurs were a group of archosauriform reptiles that radiated during the Triassic period. Superficially resembling modern crocodilians, these carnivores first appeared roughly 242 million years ago and soon possessed a near worldwide distribution, with fossils found in Eurasia, North America, Brazil, Morocco and Madagascar. Despite being long-jawed, sharp-toothed predators, Early discoveries of these animals usually consisted of isolated teeth. These were deemed to be leaf-shaped, and therefore belonging to some sort of herbivorous reptile, given the name Phytosaurs. However, later discoveries proved just how ironic this naming tradition would be. Like modern Sushians, Phytosaurs were likely semi-aquatic ambush hunters, although this view has been challenged for some members, but more on that later. Skull shape and tooth proportions varied between individual genera, suggesting varying ecological niches. Some forms, such as Rutiodon and Paleorhinus, possessed elongated narrow jaws with small conical teeth. These forms were piscivores like modern gharials, and they're described as having a dolcirostral skull shape. Other genera were the complete reverse of this, having massive broad skulls equipped with very powerful jaws. These animals were brachyrostral, with heterodont teeth useful for grabbing and slicing large terrestrial prey. In a repeating theme on this channel, the phylogenetic placement of phytosaurs has tended to vary quite significantly. The traditional view was that they were the most basal members of Pseudosuchia, being archaic relatives of modern crocodilians. However, some more recent studies have suggested a placement outside of true archosaurs, being the sister group to them instead. Despite strongly resembling crocodiles, alligators and relatives, there were a number of anatomical differences between these groups. Phytosaurs retained the more primitive ankle construction present in earlier archosauriforms, along with lacking a bony palate in the mouth. In modern crocodilians, this allows the animals to breathe even with a mouthful of water. It is likely that phytosaurs possessed a soft palate instead for the same purpose. In addition, the nostrils were located on top of the head, close to the eyes, in a manner similar to that of whales and dolphins, while crocs have nostrils located at the tips of their snouts. Phytosaur teeth were also often serrated and more blade-like than in these modern archosaurs. The most basal possible phytosaur so far described was the genus Diandongosuchus from the Middle Triassic of China. It was a small animal, known from an almost complete specimen that would have measured 1.5 metres long in life. The animal inhabited a warm coastal region, and presumably lived a lifestyle similar to that of a modern saltwater crocodile, lacking adaptations for a fully marine existence, but feeding on fish and smaller vertebrates in shallow waters. Diandongosuchus is by far the best known basal phytosaur, with other forms represented only by teeth and tiny fragments of bone. More derived members of the group are contained within the family Parasuchidae. A number of early Parasuchids were gharial-like piscivores. Forms such as the German Ebrachosuchus and the 2.5 meter Paleorhinus had highly elongate, narrow jaws and proportionally large skulls, indicative of a semi-aquatic, fish-hunting ecological niche. Another close relative, Parasuchus, was native to the Indian subcontinent during the Late Triassic. Interestingly, this gharial-like dolcirostral form emerged independently multiple times in phytosaurs. The large genus Rutiodon also inhabited a similar niche, but was a more derived animal, dwelling in the eastern United States and measuring up to 8 metres long. This is massive by the standards of Triassic archosaurs, 
suggesting that semi-aquatic phytosaurs were able to support larger sizes due to a life spent partially submerged in water. Other genera were also enormous predators, but hunted prey rather differently. Angistorhinus had a heavier skull and more robust teeth, suggesting that it was a hunter of terrestrial prey by ambush, similar to modern crocodiles and alligators. The skull alone was 1.2 metres long, with the entire animal also measuring up to 8 metres, with the species Angistorhinus megalodon possibly reaching 10 metres. A close relative, Brachysuchus from the late Triassic of Texas, possessed an even more robust skull with a shorter and thicker rostrum. The teeth at the tips of the jaws were tusk-like and functioned as grasping organs, while the teeth at the rear of the jaws were blade-like and served to slice through flesh. Large sites of muscle attachment at the rear of the skull suggest a powerful bite. Potential prey items would have included most land-based archosaurs and the herbivorous dicynodonts. Similar adaptations are seen in the most derived phytosaurs, the members of the clade Leptosuchomorpha. All of these were large animals with proportionately massive and some seriously intimidating looking skulls. The most famous of these was probably Smilosuchus from the late Triassic North America. Like all phytosaurs, the genus had the nostrils close to the top of the head, near to the eyes. The rostral crest and nasal bulge supporting these raised nostrils was larger in Smilosuchus than in all other phytosaurs. Its skull was extremely large, over 1.5 metres long, with some specimens suggesting gargantuan individuals with a total body length of 12 metres. This would put these phytosaurs in the same ballpark as the most massive later Pseudosuchians. The jaws are very short and broad, and the teeth are heterodont, with large tusks at the anterior of the mouth for impaling prey, and more blade-like teeth for slicing flesh close to the back of the mouth. The forward-pointing teeth are mounted on a bulge at the tip of the snout, present in nearly all phytosaurs. Its lower jaw is short and deep, indicating a powerful bite. This, coupled with its size, suggests that it hunted large prey such as the Dicynodont placerius. Macaropropsopus, a close relative, was also found in Western North America during the Norian stage of the Late Triassic, with up to seven potential species. The European Nicrosaurus, another large form, was rather unusual. Nicrosaurus may have been more terrestrial than other phytosaurs. Occurring in marginal marine environments or in outright terrestrial settings, it had longer limb bones, a straighter femur, and a deeper pelvis than other phytosaurs. Combined with its unusually deep upper jaw and heterodont teeth, it was most likely a secondarily terrestrial predator, probably not at all dissimilar from terrestrial crocodilomorphs like the latest Subecosuchians. Meanwhile, the genus Mystriosuchus, meaning spoon crocodile, took the opposite evolutionary route. A complete specimen discovered in 1995 demonstrated that the animal measured 4 metres long, with postcranial anatomy suggesting that Mystriosuchus was more adapted to aquatic life than other known phytosaurs, possessing shorter and more paddle-like limbs, as well as just two types of osteoderms, as opposed to the higher diversity of other phytosaurs. Cranial morphology is suggestive of a primarily fish-eating diet, having long jaws like those of modern gharials. Fossil localities reveal an animal at home in fully marine ecosystems. Despite their evident success, the phytosaurs succumbed to extinction by the end of the Triassic. Like many other lineages of large animals at the time, the phytosaurs fell victim to the end Triassic extinction event, which also wiped out the Aetosaurs, Rauisuchians, and the Dicynodonts. The causes of this event are still debated, but it seems that a wave of extinctions was triggered by increased volcanism due to the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea. CO2 levels in the atmosphere doubled, and the runaway greenhouse effect emerged, with the rifting continent suffering extreme shifts in climate. The smaller archosaurs, in particular the Adimetatarsalians and the slender terrestrial Pseudosuchians, along with early mammal relatives, survived and radiated widely in the Jurassic period. In this case, the phytosaurs may have been doomed by their overall larger size and the loss of suitable habitat during the extinction. The more derived Pseudosuchians would soon evolve to fill their vacant niches, eventually leading to the crocodilians still with us today. Thanks for watching everyone. In two weeks time I'll be covering the Oxyunids, a lineage of superficially cat-like early carnivorous mammals. See you again soon, and thanks for your support.
Cheerio.